you're a frontline state. Mm -hmm. um, and you've been hit by massive cyber attacks before. Yeah. You know what it's like to be under the gun from Russia. Mm -hmm. Have you felt any escalation in asymmetric warfare, other national security threats to your country? Well, the cyber attacks have been uh, have increased, uh, and and we have been under uh, severe cyber attacks. But uh, we have also, uh, since uh, the 2007, when we were first hit by cyber attacks, we have invested a lot in cybersecurity. So uh, our people don't know about those attacks because they don't go through. But of course, they are learning and trying to use new tools uh, to uh, to attack our e-governance. E of course, we are monitoring, uh, you know, the Russian influence uh, within our society and trying to divide our society. And this is what they do elsewhere as well. But I think that our, our society is actually more resilient to this because we know to look for this. And we have already, since the war started, we have sent, uh, you know, people who don't have the right to be in Estonia. Uh, we have sent them away back to Russia um, and, and we constantly monitor when such people uh, come up. So I think that our, we are actually more resilient than some of the countries that have much better neighbors and uh, feel that Russia is a far away country. Well, no, they're working everywhere. When I think about the um, last year, one of the most extraordinary things is that you've had 27 European Union states vote for nine rounds of sanctions. Yes. You've had them all support Ukrainian accession to the EU. You're a frontline state and all three Baltics, the Nordics, Poland, obviously have a different perspective on national security when it comes to Russia than say Spain, mm -hmm. right? How, how are you feeling the honest tensions inside the coalition? Mm -hmm. Not the fact that you get the votes, mm -hmm. but is it getting harder? Are you seeing mm. the potential for that fragmentation? In 2014, when Crimea happened, mm. I was a member of European Parliament. And in the European Parliament, you have people who are directly elected from different member states uh, and represent different views. And you could you could see what their public opinion is. And, and I was so shocked how fast uh, it went uh, to that direction that uh, let's forget about it, uh, let's uh, move on. And, and this time it's different. In order to influence the decisions of uh, leaders of democratic countries, you have to work with their public opinion that they see the picture the way we see. Uh, and, and I think keeping this unity has been, um, you know, very big achievement for the European Union, but also NATO. And it's getting harder, that is true, because, you know, new worries come in, high inflation, all the worries that we have in, in our domestic politics. Like one of the um, prime ministers uh, from one <coughs> country that is not close to um, that uh, war at all uh, said to me that, my public opinion is not supporting this at all, but I'm doing this because I want to be on the right side of history and 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 I'm trying to bring my people on board. And you don't this want to tell right. me what country the prime minister no, is I from. Will. I can start <laughs> guessing. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's like uh, uh, one anonymous uh, state in European Union.